Hello and welcome to Fintech Diary. Every week we speak to an industry expert who's part of the fintech revolution. In the world of fintechs, which is based on constant evolution and innovation, we question change makers on how they plan ahead and read the future developments. In every chapter of the Fintech Diary, we get the breadth and depth of every segment related to fintech. My name is Amol Dete and my guest for this chapter is Sujendu Kulia, the co-founder and CEO of Zopper. Sujendu, glad to have you. Thanks, Amol, for having me. Super excited to be here today. Super, Sujendu. So to begin with, uh, since we're talking to you for the first time, I, I and my readers would like to understand the dashboard of Zopper in terms of uh, when did you start? How many employees do you have? What is your business model? How big is your company? What was your last fundraise? So just, you know, Make us well acquainted with uh, your financial and the business dashboard to begin with, Sujendu. Sure, sure. So, Amol, we we are a, we are almost a, like eleven years old uh, organization, and uh, today we're trying to solve the insurance distribution problem of the country. Uh, we would be around uh, six hundred people strong, and uh, we operate out of our Noida headquarters, and we have actually raised around 100 million dollars in equity capital over the lifetime of Zopper's existence and uh, we planning to deploy that to basically go ahead and you know get different ecosystem partners on board to sort of help them seamlessly distribute insurance so uh, 11 years is a recent time uh, in fact we look at uh, the insurance industry itself that's smartly 20 years old if we talk specifically about the you know, the private insurance industry, maybe 2021 or uh, 22 years. So how has been your experience? How has been uh, the response from the industry for the solutions that you're offering? Uh, because largely the picture of insurance in India is the penetration is less, the business is not shaping up the way it should have shaped up. And the people are generally looking at only those products which are kind of mandatory, like party motor insurance, motor insurance. And health penetration is very low. So, how has been your reading? How has the industry responding to your, you know, products, and how has been the collaborations there? Sure. So, Amal, what we have seen lately is that there is a significant push from the ministry as well as from the regulator, and we have seen, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Panda has joined as the new IRDA chairman, and he's a very forward-looking person. A lot of changes that he is. Uh, bringing in is basically for the benefit of the industry at large. Uh, what we have seen now is people and the insurance companies and ecosystem partners have started realizing that the kind of innovation that has happened in the pen, in, in the lending and uh, in the payment space, uh, those kind of innovations haven't had uh, taken fruit uh, in the insurance industry. So as you rightly said, the penetration is around 3.7% as far as life is concerned and less than 1% in general. Um, there, is, there is a lot that we need to do. And what we believe is that if you are going to distribute insurance to the last mile, then technology has to play a very, very significant role. And that's exactly what we're doing. We are enabling you know, existing large, mid size and small ecosystem partners to distribute insurance the right way seamless way and provide them digital insurance journeys. So when we specific, specifically talk about the distribution, uh, obviously the companies have its own challenges. They cannot open the branches in every city and town. And that's why they have been taking the support of the digital. But has digital actually helping insurance companies or maybe distribution in strength, strengthening the distribution? What is your experience in terms of the overall distribution since you are working with insurance companies? If you could share some user case studies in terms of the companies that you are working with, specifically on the distribution side. Sure, sure. So I think uh, for for proper disruption amol to happen in any industry, there has to be a lot of change in the macroeconomic factors also, right? Uh, you know, 2016, when Geo came, the customer acquisition cost for any consumer, you know, facing business came down, right? So even if there was Zopper 11 years ago, uh, the adoption of Zopper's platform today as opposed to 11 years ago uh, would have been very different because today people are more mature. Uh, we see digital playing a very, very significant role across various other industries. 
so today the adoption of our platform is much much better than it used to be five years ago. What we have done is, if you look at uh, our business model, Amol, our business model is very simple. We sit between insurance companies and ecosystem partners, right? And an ecosystem partner from our lens is someone who basically has a captive customer base. Hmm. And our job is to ensure that we are offering a platform to these ecosystem partners so that they can cross-sell and upsell insurance products to the captive customer base and we offer them an additional revenue channel right because what we have seen across multiple uh you know uh, business lines uh cuts across all these business lines most of these businesses are not able to make money out of their core business line and hence they are always looking at some peripheral and ancillary business lines and and distributing insurance is something that they are looking at very very strongly right and also, if you look at from the insurance company's lens, as you rightly said, that insurance companies, uh, there is a lot of price-related wars that are happening primarily in the metro as well as in the satellite towns. Right. But nobody is willing to take you know, a leap forward and try to distribute insurance in Tier 3, Tier 4, and the hinterlands of the country. And arguably so, because... Uh, this, there is a cost of distribution, right? There is a marginal cost of distribution. And with technology, we believe that the marginal cost of distribution will come down to zero uh, because technology is the only thing that can infinitely scale. So to, to tomorrow or today, if I have to distribute, say, for example, a bite-sized insurance product costing 99 rupees. Mm. Now, no traditional insurance company with a traditional uh, you know, distribution setup will be able to distribute a 99 rupees product to the hinterland of the country and make money. That is something which is just uh, impossible to even fathom. The only way you can expand your reach and then expand the distribution is basically to use technology-led platforms, use existing infrastructure, and that's the way you not only increase penetration, but also uh, get beyond the metro and the satellite towns of the country. And that is exactly what we're doing from the lens of a uh, insurance company okay uh but how does it work how do you make sure, money? sure. i understand that the whole infrastructure model the api driven model that you are bringing on the table but how does it work you also mentioned that the you allow the ecosystem partners to cross sell and upsell right how, how how does it actually work could you just give us some examples there uh, sure so so let's say i take uh, uh, you know let's say i take an example of an e-commerce company so now an e-commerce company in india would be sitting on nothing less than you know 50 to 75 million customer base right and these customer base will have different profile different customer segmentation demography disposable income what we do is we come in we slice and dice the data uh, create different cohorts and offer very interesting insurance products to these cohorts and then use our insurance distribution platform to seamlessly integrate in the checkout page, say, for example, with an e-commerce company, which means the distribution of insurance becomes very, very seamless. And on the other side, we are integrated with multiple insurance companies. So on a real time basis, we can basically change the product depending upon the uptake of the product uh, in the checkout page of the insurance company. If the loss ratio of an insurance company for a specific product goes high, then you know we will be able to quickly switch the insurance providers or the manufacturers. As a result, you know for a distributor like an e-commerce company, the promise that you know the insurance comp uh, sorry that the distributor has made to uh, the customer that remains constant, right? So what we do is we ensure that the right set of products flow through our pipes, and the products are always contextual to the business. So we will not be selling, say, for example, uh, you know, a cancer insur insurance with Make My Trip, but we will be selling, say, for example, a baggage loss insurance, uh, maybe a cancellation for, for any reason, cancellation for medical reasons. So the product has to be very contextual to your core business. And we will then work with insurance companies to create and underwrite products and then use those products, integrate with the ecosystem partner and ensure that there is sufficient throughput um, as far as the uptake and the adoption of the products are concerned. Could you please tell me how how is the demand there? Are maybe the Amazons of the world or make my trips of the world really looking forward to how these customized products 
If yes, what kind of products, what kind of growth have you seen here? Yeah, so if you look at our organization, our organization is growing almost uh, 150 to 200 percent CAGR for the last five years. So this year we are clocking almost 1100 crores of premium uh, with a good gross margin and a good net margin. Unlike any other startups, we are a profitable venture, which means we make money, unlike any of the other startups where most of the burn happens primarily on the customer acquisition. And because of our business model, which is purely a B2B2C model and not a direct-to-consumer model, uh, we have been able to build this business in a fundamentally unit economics positive solid way. right? And uh, if you see the growth of the company over the last five years, we have been able to grow our gross return premium, as I was mentioning, almost uh, 150 to 200% CAGR. Okay? And that should give you fair sense that not only we are growing, but you know our partners are also embracing the technology and the products that we bring onto the table. And if you look at our partners today, we power, power more than 250 partners across mm -hmm. banks, NBFCs, microfinance institutions, e-commerce companies, digital lending companies, used car marketplaces, regional rural banks, cooperative society, uh, retail chains, OEMs. So across the various, across the spectrum, we have been able to distribute and onboard insurance and onboard ecosystem partners across this entire spectrum. So what we have done on the distribution side, Amol, is divided our entire distribution strategy in three parts. So we have a digital ecosystem, we have a financial ecosystem, and we have a lifestyle ecosystem. Digital ecosystem would comprise players such as e-commerce companies, uh, digital lending companies, challenger cards, uh, used car marketplaces, like all these kind of mobility companies. And we power quite a few of them, very, very significant names. On the financial ecosystem side, we power banks, uh, PSU banks, private banks, small right. finance banks, payment banks, regional rural banks, cooperative societies. We power NBFCs, non-banking financial corporations. Uh, you know, NBFCs offering you know working capital loans, offering vehicle loans, offering personal loans across the spectrum. We also uh, have onboarded a lot of microfinance institutions uh, and and a lot of banking correspondent channels also in the in the financial uh, segment. And on the lifestyle segment, we power some of the largest retail chains and some of the largest OEMs of the country. So if you look at the spectrum, you will realize that we have cut across all kinds of businesses and all kinds of business verticals. And we have been able to create very interesting contextual products across mm -hmm. all these different business lines. Okay. Noted your points. Quite meaningful, Sujendru. I think it looks like you have completely, you know, analyzed, observed the ecosystem really well and find out the loopholes where you can fit in your business model. It sounds really good. But let me quickly understand one more thing. You said that you're profitable, which is really nice. How do you actually make money? Do you charge commission to insurance companies? You charge a fees to them? How do you, or maybe you, you know, uh, put your API platform, you know, as a service? How, how do you actually make money here? So we are a SaaS based uh, company, Amol. So which means every policy that flows through my pipe, whether the policy is a health policy or a motor policy or a life policy or a SME policy, uh, we charge our ecosystem partner a certain margin. And that is how we make money. So it's a very simple business model that every policy that will flow through my pipe, uh, the ecosystem partner has to pay me for that. Okay, uh, no radio points. Now, going ahead, because lots of venture tech companies have come into picture, you have an advantage of you started early and maybe you have already partnered with a lot of companies and you are profitable as well. So you can scale up and strengthen perhaps very fast. But there are lots of venture tech players who have come up in the marketing, uh, you know, in this particular domain. A colleague who reports on uh, insurance business or insurance as a sector told me that the number of venture tech companies have gone up significantly in the last two years. And in fact, they have raised lots of capital. So don't you think that this competition is actually shaping up aggressively? Yes. Not an insurer, insurance, but an insure tech business as such. Sure. So Amal, I'll, I will uh, spend two, three minutes explaining or answering this question. Because this is important to get uh, an understanding on the lay of the land of the country as far as insure tech is concerned. So if you look at uh, some of the 
large companies in the insure tech and i'll take names also so that everybody uh, will get a better understanding of what people are what the different competitors are doing so if you take a policy bazaar policy bazaar is a b2c company they are trying to distribute insurance directly to consumers yeah. right um if you look at some of the other players like insurance deco renew by total mint cover fox these players are trying to disrupt the agency channel of insurance companies so what happens is these folks will enable the large agents with a evolved technology platform which will have multiple integrations with insurance companies right so that's one way of looking at the distribution uh, of and that is again a very very heavy manpower intensive approach because if you really have to uh, scout out the consolidators and the retail agents you have to deploy at least thousands and thousands of people to even get to that right we have taken a very different approach our approach has always been that why do we have to deploy so many people when there are multiple businesses uh, across multiple geographies of the country who are looking for a new revenue channel all you need to do is basically offer your technology platform to these uh, ecosystem partners so that they can distribute insurance in a seamless manner because insurance is regulated uh you just cannot wake up in the morning and think of distributing insurance right it has to be offered through a very compliant uh you know and regulatory positive way so our business model is very simple we do not spend even 1 rupee uh in customer acquisition when you look at you know the eventual customer who is the beneficiary of the product our belief is that if you just look around you will find multiple ecosystem partners sitting on large captive customer base and they are trying to figure out how do you monetize this customer base and monetization typically happens in three ways uh, from from distributing financial products either you can lend either you can offer them mutual funds or you can sell insurance right and our belief is that post covid the understanding and the adoption of insurance is way way better than any other financial products in the market and that's one of the reason why we have grown so significantly right so when you look at from this angle you will realize that everybody is taking a very different approach to insurance distribution policy bazaar is taking a direct to consumer approach right all the other pospi companies we call them point of sale person companies like insurance deco renew by total bin they are taking a very different approach in disrupting the agency model of the insurance companies we have taken a very b2 b2 b2c centric approach mm -hmm. where we are offering additional businesses to the insurance companies and hence they are on our side and they don't consider us as competitors and we are offering an additional revenue channel to the ecosystem partners and hence we are offering them better their margin and better their profitability so basically both these partners insurance carriers as well as ecosystem partners they look at zopper from a very positive lens right now when we talk about multiple insure tech players you will realize that insurance is a uh, it's a complex product right so there is policy issuance there is distribution there is claim there is endorsement reporting there are multiple pit stops in the entire insurance journey hmm. quite a few insure tech companies are coming up and trying to solve one individual piece hmm. there will be somebody who is trying to solve the claims piece right. there will be, there will be somebody who will trying to solve the digital journey of the insurance companies somebody who who is trying to look at it from the insurance companies lens and telling the insurance companies that your technology stack is not great enough let me build the technology stack for you hmm. okay. so i believe because insurance is such a large sector hmm. not a single company will be able to solve various problems arising out of this sector so there will be multiple such startups which are required to solve various slices of this entire insurance chain uh we are primarily focused on the distribution piece that how can i take a product and take it to the last mile at a cost which is uh feasible and palatable for the insurance companies and also offer an additional revenue channel to the ecosystem partner so we are very very focused on the distribution part of the entire insurance game 
Okay, I think that's a detailed one. I think uh, to one quite meaningful one. Uh, what next? Going ahead, uh, considering the partnerships that you have, will you continue to focus on asking insurance companies to offer a customized product according to the need of the ecosystem? That is one part. Or will you also venture out maybe into the typical retail products where the margins are perhaps a little higher than the you know the small products that you know you are partnering with the ecosystem? What what exactly next for you now? Sure. So Amol, what we have realized in India today that there is not a lot of innovation that has happened on the product side from insurance companies, and primarily because if you look at the distribution today uh, on the life side. 70% of, uh, and I'm talking about private insurers, because if there is LIC, then it is completely skewed towards the agents of, there are 13 lakh agents of LIC. When you look at private insurers, 70% of life insurance is being sold through bank assurance channel. Yes. And the remaining would be through agents and corporate, uh, you know, agents and brokers and other intermediaries. So if I am an insurance company today, I do not have, uh, you know, a playground to even innovate. Because the business distribution and the distribution channels are almost set. One is banker, one is agency, one is corporate, uh, one is uh, broking, right? When players like us come up and tell the insurance companies that you have tried to paint the entire city with a single stroke of brush, but here I am bringing, I am bringing you a different lens where uh, somebody who is taking a loan in the microfinance sector he or she is very different from somebody who is taking a loan from an NBFC as opposed to someone who is taking a loan from a bank. The profiling of these three customers are all very different and hence the requirement of new set of products is imminent and important. You cannot offer the microfinance person the same product which you are offering to somebody who is taking a loan from a bank. right? So I would say that Today, because of new distribution ways and distribution methods, the need of interesting bespoke and customized products are more than what it used to be five years before, when the distribution was almost segmented, that there is one banker, one agency, and one broking. Right? So that's the reason we would like to play a very, very significant role working closely with insurance companies and our ecosystem partners to create bespoke and customized products for the various ecosystems that we work with, right? That will help me uh, in market share. That will also give me exclusivity from insurance companies, which will also help me uh, help, help in, in the skin in the game, right? If I tell an insurance company that you deliver a product for me for this sector, and I will give you 100 crores of premium. So my skin is also in the game. And hence, I see that there is a lot of uh, acceptability as far as these products are concerned, and people are now trying to create interesting products. Over the last uh, one year, we have actually created three or four very interesting products. And those products have actually hit the market and they have been extremely successful uh, across multiple verticals that we operate. So the proof of the pudding is already there. I do understand uh, you know, the innovation that is required in the product because we have a similar product since the last almost couple of years. At least of late, you know, few of the non-life insurance companies have started offering some innovation in the vehicle uh, insurance. Yes. At least, you know, they are not treating the buyer of Audi and and yes. a Ferrari yes. with the same brush, right? I think that that's what happening. But maybe one or two important, uh, what you can say, uh, uh, highlights that you would like to share, Sujendra, in terms of what is it that you specifically want in product and distribution when it comes to innovation going forward, which will actually help insurance industry also maybe to achieve at least few basis points of penetration, you know, going ahead. Sure. So Amol, it's it's all about suitability. So uh, there is a term in the bank assurance channel, which is called a suitability matrix, which means somebody who has one crore savings balance, as opposed to somebody having a 5,000 rupees savings balance, can we create different products for them? Today, you have the same insurance company offering the same retail life, same retail health uh, products to both of them. So what we are doing is working very closely with the banks as well as the insurance companies 
and try to create suitability metrics depending upon uh, the customer segmentation, right? That's, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that can we create better products with better inclusions, lesser exclusions, uh, so that this product can then be offered to a certain channel, uh, which will have a lot more value to the customer as opposed to something which is just money making for the ecosystem partner. So we are doing a lot of work on the microfinance uh, industry, uh, the re regional rural bank industry, where we have seen that there's a huge scope uh, of innovation, right? So we are talking about more on the bite size insurance products, insurance products with, uh, you know, lesser premium, lesser coverages, so that at least someone who is who has not been under the fold of protection so far, protect, protect, huh? he should at least have a flavor. So it's like, you know, the sachet of shampoo, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of paying, you know, 150 rupees for a shampoo, why don't you tease him with probably a two rupee shampoo so that at least he understands that insurance is something which is critical for me and will be, uh, you know, standing by my side when any eventuality happens, right? So I think there is a lot of work that needs to happen in that space also. And I think a lot of sandboxing is happening today uh, where IRDA is trying to create interesting bite-sized products so that at least in the tier 4, tier 5 hinterlands of the country, people at least start tasting what insurance can uh, bring about to them. Quite meaningful uh, thoughts, uh, uh, Sujengu, on that front. Uh, let me ask one important question specifically about the industry. Uh, in the last couple of years, we have seen uh, rapid growth specifically to the financial innovation that we can, uh, and the insurance innovation as well, specifically into fintech and insurtech space. Uh, but currently, it looks like the investors are going slow, the policymakers are going aggressive, and the number of fintechs are actually revisiting their business models. Uh, Maybe it's four, four to five years for them into business models and it looks very difficult for them that, you know, they are profitable. Now, your story is absolutely different. You are absolutely a profitable company. That's what you told me. But how do you review the industry now? Do you see that investors are actually going slow? Do you see that there will be little hiccups going ahead specifically under the fintech space? Or how do you actually see the India's fintech ecosystem right now? In what stage do you see it? So Amol, you are absolutely right. And whatever we have seen in the lending industry over the last four or five years, and specifically over the last year, we have seen a lot of startups uh, not being able to raise money in the lending space, right? And it is practically because my belief is, and the way we have built the organization, uh, you have to ensure that if you are spending money, you need to know why are you spending money, right? You cannot spend money thinking that five years down the line, I will be sitting on 50 million consumers and I will start thinking about making money at that point in time. That is now not how businesses happen, right? So the way we look at it is that if I am, so today I don't sell a product where I'm making, where I'm not making any money, that's period. So that's like, you know, a holy grail for us, right? I mean, I have to still make one rupee if I'm not making a single rupee, I am not interested in that uh, product or, or in that distribution. Because that's a DNA change, Amol. I think, uh, you know, we have been in this industry for 11 years. In these 11 years, we have seen two uh, downturns, right? Two recession. And probably you can say that, you know, uh, gray hair or, or probably no hair brings some sort of wisdom. Um, and our wisdom today tells us that businesses have to be fundamentally solid. We, we are okay to spend money for a couple of years, but there has to be a path to profitability, which is very, very, very concisely and precisely being uh, driven through a blueprint where the investors need to also bless that so that we know that we are deliberately spending money in customer acquisition for one, one and a half years. And then we try and figure out what to do. It cannot happen that you keep spending money for five years and then think about you know, uh, monetizing that customer base at that point in time. That is something that we never do. So we do parallel things. So if we uh, if we are doing a customer acquisition, we parallel think, how do you monetize? How do you monetize, right? Because at the end of the day, your company has to stand on its own feet 
that's that's very very important i mean how long can you survive on capital infusion right there has to be a business model which is fundamentally solid uh, which should ideally uh, you know reap dividends and at least have a path to profitability so my my sense of today's space is that uh, people need to be a little conscious about the way they spend money and very very prudent about why they are spending money and how do you ensure that uh, you know they walk the path to profitability if not today but at least two years down the line quite meaningful one to jendu and i think uh, that's a quite, quite bold line for me i can treat it as a headline that you know we don't sell any product where we don't make money i think uh, that's in fact a very important uh, highlight of this discussion which i think fintechs and startups should also look at because i have been meeting and interviewing a lot of fintechs and startups and i have seen lots of fintechs are only and only talking about the customer acquisition and ultimately they do not know what to do with that absolutely you know, the Absolutely. and and then perhaps the question is okay now i have a data of maybe you know uh, 5 million customers and what do i do with this by using what do i do with this yes <laughs> yeah exactly so that so i think quite meaningful thoughts uh, sujendu and uh, you know i think you are uh, dealing with a very interesting business for sure uh, and i i have also seen that you know on the insurance side what made a big difference is the small ticket products right initially the product side is was also very very expensive i remember Absolutely. that the ulip product was as expensive as 30000 and the industry was complaining you know of <laughs> lack of penetration or Absolutely. lack of sales but i think the schemes like even uh, you know the pradhan mantri janal suraksha and all yes. also made a difference there because i think uh, the ticket size was really small but i think it's good to know that you are making a difference by bringing some ecosystem together and crafting some customized products there correct so correct. thank you so much for your time and uh, you know sharing those remarks here so ladies and gentlemen that's a wrap uh, from fintech diary click on the fintech diary and tap to view our previous episodes as well if you like it please don't forget to share it thank you so much for watching fintech diary on edbfsi.com thank you